Okay, Johannes, I've got this recording. Awesome. And so we're doing chakra body transformation today. And okay. I've got your goals here for the session. You're wanting to work on improving psychic senses, feeling, and energy work. Okay, improving psychic senses, psychic feelings, and energy work, balance, consistency, and channeling. These are some really good goals. Did you want to yeah. share anything about any of that before I get started? Well, well yes. Yeah, weeks ago, I actually um, really wanted the continuation of the Raising My Vibration yeah. session. You know, we were working that. So I was really getting into the mood, just raising my vibration, getting ready to release all of this old stuff that, that holds me yeah. back. And I really realized like um, how much this, you call it demonic energy, was really trying to... Mm -hmm. um, confuse me with useless stuff to prevent me from really raising my vibration so this right. is really and awesome it's, actually, no, it's so calm so um so much clearer everything <laughs> i'm glad to hear that because sometimes um we don't always realize how we get into what we would define as normal patterns and it feels normal but um like for instance you have someone else go in to see your normal patterns and they see what the imbalance is so it's like demonic energy is really just you holding your self back from expansion you know and it has mm -hmm. a certain frequency to it so it can it feel like that because you're self becoming self manipulative so you're your own worst enemy now you know what i mean <laughs> so yes. yeah i think that's a great direction to go with this i'm going to keep everything else in mind um but continue to raise your vibration and and look for anything else that might be holding you back and that could be on mm. the same page as that so yeah. Awesome. You're, you're awesome, Johannes. Okay. <laughs> thank you so much. You're welcome. You're awesome. You are so awesome. It's oh, thank such you. such a pleasure to work with you. I'm so honored to be able to work so much with you. It's really, really great. Thank the support you. Is awesome. <laughs> it means a lot to me. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> okay. I'm going to relax now and I'm going to get connected. Okay. So I'm just going to be in the zone here and I'm going to talk a lot. So, okay. I'm just sending information out to the universe here on what we're wanting to accomplish today so I can get in the right frequency with that. Hmm. So the first thing I see, there's a, a man, he's kind of dressed in a medieval type getup. So he's got like a, a helmet type metal hat, metal kind of armor, and he's got a wooden spear with a metal um, end to it. And he's uh, um, having it go around like a baton really, 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 really fast. So it's just spinning, 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 spinning right in front of me. And it's spinning clockwise. And I'm having him slow this on down. And he's really focused on not looking at the baton, but looking straight ahead. Somehow he's able to do both at the same time, spin this and keep looking forward. Um, but he's not moving forward. He's just standing here right now. And me slowing this down is going to help alter the the inspirations so we can see what else is here that we're not seeing. So I'm slowing things down. And I will say seeing this spinning spear, um, so chakras are all, they're kind of like washing machines. So they're like going around in circles too. So there's like a coil going on. So there's a spinning um, element to chakras that are active. So inactive, it means they're not really turning. And this is turning quite well. Um, so I keep um, feeling an echo about chakras here, but I don't know much more than that. Um, but I am slowing this down for good reason. So I'm just going to continue to do that so we can see what this is all about. Okay. He doesn't realize that I'm slowing him down. It's like he's still looking ahead. He's still looking ahead, but he doesn't realize his hands are moving slower. So this is spinning slower. And it does, again, remind me of time. It's spinning clockwise. It's almost come to a complete stop where he's just holding the spear in front of him. 
And this is also an interesting clue, but a sphere is also an arrow. And so when this stops and it's just right in front of him, the arrow is pointing upward. But he's not looking up, he's looking straight ahead still. And that's actually kind of cool because looking straight ahead means I'm moving forward in life. I'm looking straight ahead. I'm not looking down at the ground, you know, but he's still not, um, I'm still trying to make sense of what his activity or what is his motivation or inspiration all about. So he's totally stopped with the spear and the spear is pointing upward. And now he's standing extremely still, almost like you see those like British guards and you try to get them to move or smile and they don't do it. He's standing like extremely still. And I see now behind him, there's a pathway to a castle. So he's standing in front of the pathway that is going to either I can go into the castle or perhaps he is trying to leave. I'm not sure. We're kind of in the middle of you know, going to explore a castle or maybe we're done with the castle and we're ready for the next thing, looking straight ahead away from the castle. All the while, the spear points up at the sky. Okay, I'm going to slow things down even more. This whole scene is at a standstill. And I'm going into your heart and there's strange waves of light. And they are in rings. They aren't, it's not in a coil shape. It's more in like, um, like a slinky has rings. <laughs> so it's like that kind of shape. It's a coil, circular shapes. And the rings are kind of like a whitish green color. And there, um, there's some wafting white energies around these rings as well. And I'm just going deeper into your heart. It's, uh, there's a lovely silence that I actually experience because slowing everything else down, getting perspective here on direction, where are we going, um, what is the divine time for everything, um, slowing all of those energies down to get then into the heart of things, the heart of the matter, um, it's going to give us more access you know, to more information. And this is what I see as I go into your heart portal nothing is saying anything is um, negative or positive. It just is kind of neutral right now. It's just in this neutral um, expression. So there's nothing really to be made of any of this yet, other than what I've discovered so far. Going in deeper. One cool thing about you, Johannes, that's quite clear here is um, your, your, your heart is, is open to another going deeper into your heart, which means that you are open to trusting and you're allowing another to access who you are within your heart. That's a really special thing to acknowledge. It's really special because your heart is totally open to me coming in and exploring. There's no resistance. There's no blockage that's saying, I'm not ready for this. Or, um, you know, there's no vulnerability about me coming in. There's no security guards or anything. It's just completely open, which is a really cool detail. All right. So I've reached a door and it does look like I'm inside the body. <laughs> so it's like body tissues, walls. Um, they're kind of a, like intestines looking. Um, and the door is though made out of wood and it's got a rounded top and it's like French doors. So you could kind of open them both up like a cupboard, um, but they're doors. And these doors are closed. So everything's quite open up until this point which is um, actually quite deep in, I mean, from where we could begin this, we've gone um, a substantial way into your heart portal before we've come across closed doors, which is showing a lot of like incredible heart opening improvements for you. So let's see what these doors are all about. Huh. Okay. Boy. 
there's a lot of information. I don't even know how to begin with it because it's uh, showing me different places that I need to go look at, but it, I can only do one thing at a time. Um, one of the things that quickly came to me was looking at the mind and again, the, the sound of time or a clock. Um, and this is keeps saying this is really important for me to take a look at this with the mind all the while I'm in the heart. And then I'm exploring chakra body transformation, which is bringing into alignment all of these energies as in allowing them to start supporting each other um, at a deeper level. So if I do so chakra body transformation, it's like, like the first session of all time. Um, we're working with only so much depth, but the more work you get done, the deeper we can go and the deeper we can um, align that um, harmonization with all of your chakras. So, so I'm just acknowledging the mind right now and the clock <laughs> and I'm actually, I don't know, I'm like putting my hands together and I'm doing this like, um, sp this sort of sacred bow in honor of the mind <laughs> and I'm saying, um, I see you and I understand and I'm delighted to come visit you. And then I show the mind that um, I'm called to look at this first, um, but I'll make my way there. All right, so I've sent the information up to the mind. I'm still at the doorway. And now the sacral chakra here is um, kind of waving at me. And there's doors here as well. These ones are, they're two rectangular doors that meet in the center. So I, you, they're French door, like French style doors again, but they're heavy. They're kind of like a white uh, silver. So really light silver color and they're made out of metal. And they kind of remind me of refrigerator doors. Okay, so looking at your sacral chakra in conjunction here, there's just some um, vulnerability right now, and I'm just kind of letting that kind of have its own reaction or response here. There's a sensitivity to me opening these doors, and uh, that's great too because I'm telling sacral that, you know, thank you for showing me this. This is super important. I'm going to take a look at this and we're going to be gentle with this. Um, and all the while throats now waving at me and saying, hello, <laughs> what about me? I want to, I want to be seen too, which is great. So what we're looking at here is some interesting interconnections between heart and mind and then heart and sacral and sacral and throat. So we have these interesting interconnections between different chakras. So I'm just allowing all this to be acknowledged here. I'm just kind of wafting it all out. And I'm just, I'm slowing things down some more, which allows me to get beneath these frequency sounds into new ones. Okay, let's go check out the solar plexus, the emotional gut here. This is interesting because the last person to kind of jump out at me is the solar plexus, which also feels like it's kind of got, um, I don't know, like a boulder in it, but it's not heavy. It doesn't ache. It doesn't feel like I have a rock in my stomach, um, but there's a protruding hardness there <laughs> and uh, it's not wanting to be noticed for some reason. Um, which sometimes when they don't come out and say, hello, help me, and when they're actually kind of hiding inside themselves and they become quiet, sometimes the quietest chakras then become the ones that you want to be most concerned about. Um, you want to look at and make sure that they get acknowledged. So I'm telling solar plexus that I acknowledge you. I acknowledge you. Um, I keep thinking about, when I look at solar plex, I keep thinking about people um, who are really kind. Um, and then they go through hard times, people that are kind, but they're not like the squeaky wheel gets the grease. They don't need attention. They don't need people's help. But oftentimes they're the ones that could really use more hugs because they just choose to be strong for themselves and everybody else. They don't expect anybody's help, but they still deal with a lot inside themselves. Um, so when I see the solar plexus like this, it makes me think of somebody who um, is, is a very kind person, 
um, who doesn't, is it, is strong enough. They don't need everybody's help. They don't need to tell everybody about what they're going through. And sometimes what they're going through is just something they need to figure out themselves. But there's something about the communication here that, um, actually speaking out loud about what's going on in this emotional gut, um, and can be very helpful, very beneficial, because it needs to get a little bit more squeaky, like it needs to get a little bit more grease, a little more attention here. And that's not um, burdening anybody. And that's not selfish. And that's actually being human. So I'm telling solar plexus the image that came to me and how it made me feel which is when throat starts to get a little bit heavy and then mind actually, this is a difference, but it starts to drop into throat, which doesn't, ever, that's extremely rare that I would ever feel that. So mind is literally like third eye, not, not necessarily crown, but third eye is just dropped right into the throat. The throat feels a bit heavy and the solar plexus is just starting to have a little bit of circulation here. And I'm starting to feel some energy um, discomfort around the ears. And so there's just discomfort, energy discomfort swirling around there, tightness in the front of the throat. Just processing energy here. And now the, the stomach's getting kind of tight and clenched. The heart's kind of getting involved here. So there's commun energy communications as we're going through this. Okay. Just allowing all of this to continue to flow and communicate with each other. So sometimes inner communication, we don't, always get all the information to understand what's going on inside ourselves but when the energy bodies start to work together and they start reacting to each other in these different ways that's healthy because it's like family members that aren't communicating when they really need to have a family talk so we're having the family talk with your chakras so i can feel them starting to interact again um, about what this is all about beneath the surface of your conscious mind it's all inner talk. I'm still looking at this sort of medieval soldier here with the spear pointing up. It's all still like um, a grandfather clock that, that um, stopped working, but it's not broken. It's just like time stopped. Um, so that scene is still here and it's just like time has stopped. <sighs> all right, I'm going to go back into the throat for a little bit. And I'm gonna, I, I've got, um, I'm creating the throat chakra like a body, okay? And then here's um, the third eye is a body. So I have two what looks like people. Um, there's the throat person and the third eye person. Um, and they're hanging out in your throat chakra right now. The throat person is kind of a greenish yellow. Um, it's a little muddy though looking. It's more yellow than anything, it's kind of muddy. Um, and then this third eye is kind of brown and black um, and even more muddy, um, but they're kind of looking at each other and there's a separation between the two of them right now. And this is in the throat. They're having kind of a stare down. I don't know, I'm like, there's no, they're not talking to each other at all, but they're looking at each other like um, a staring contest. <laughs> so they're doing that right now. And I'm saying it's okay to give each other a hug because sometimes we need to just do a different, maybe break the ice a little bit because love helps break the ice. Staring the, each other down is only creating separation here. So um, it's really good for you both to kind of close the gap and just close your eyes even and just hug each other and throat to meld with third eye and third eye to meld with throat no matter what the energy colors look like because the only way to really heal and balance is, is let's just get it all mixed up we'll take a look at the mix up and then we can start to clean it up together as a team because everybody's dealing with their own challenges 
So when those challenges collide, now we can see what that creates. Now we can work on creating it um, in a way that's healthy for both. So they, they are, they're coming closer together and they're actually starting to hug. This is so, this says a lot of anger between these two. It's not necessarily anger, but like, um, they're kind of standoffish towards one another, like like a little bit of unresolved friction. Um, and this, these are two male energies here. And I, I'm literally allowing them to just, it's, it's just to continue to work on this. But um, the third eye um, with the brown and black has a pencil stuck into his heart. And so when he goes to hug um, the yellow, the yellow feels a poke from like the eraser of this pencil into where his heart is. Um, and it's, it's not like they can't really get close because there's just awkward pencil issue. But it also feels like friction between them. Okay, this is okay. Give me a minute here. All right, so I'm going to let these two just be as far as we've gotten this so far. Okay, I'm going to look at heart and ask heart if it knows anything about this and solar plexus and sacral chakra. Let's just see if they know anything about this. nobody's talking they're all kind of looking the other way <laughs> they're like there's like the um like cold shoulder but it's not cold they're just like pretending that they don't see what's going on here they just they're kind of whistling and looking the other way <laughs> they don't want to get involved i guess <laughs> that's what their behavior is like it's kind of silly so I create a loud clap noise and it creates vibrations into them both. And I, I shout, wake up. And I show them they have to help the situation. You don't get to do that because they, these two matter and their relationship matters. We got to create balance here about this. Crown is now kind of waving at me. Okay. Okay. A little bit of frustration and anger venting here. I'm just going to let this kind of shout out a lot of pent up anger and frustration. So it just like literally shouting it out and it is coming from, seems to be everywhere all at once. And the word shout in white um, appears and it echoes out everywhere. And I hear oh, the experience of shouting and, and frustration and anger. I'm going to let that continue to go. It just needs to keep coming out. Okay. Okay. It's going to get a little bit uglier before it gets prettier. The, so I, I'm just going to go into the image and just let the image be. I don't know what this interconnected with um, exactly. It's just something I need to look at. Um, Let's just start with uh, chains, really heavy, heavy chains. Um, and I see a man that's lying down on a table and another man who has chains ro roped around this man's neck. And he is tightening the chains in order to choke the man on the, that's lying down on the table. And he's not going to kill him, even though he seems to want to in a way. Like he wants to pull these chains so tight that his head pops off. He kind of wants to because he, there's just anger going on here, but the man on the table is just like letting this be done to him. There's something too nice about him. And so now he's put himself into a situation where he's on a table getting choked out by some chains by another who kind of wants to make his head pop off. So this is not really healthy. This isn't healthy. So I'm relaxing the man with the chains and I'm just relaxing his arms. And I say, this isn't what you want. This is unresolved frustrations inside yourself. That's, this is you not working on yourself and now using another as a tool um, in order for you to vent what you've got going on. That's not really fair to this other person, but this other person needs to get a backbone and say no to you. So really, who's in the right, who's in the wrong here? 
but come on, that's a really nice guy on the table. Does he really deserve what you're giving him right now? I don't think so. He he's uh he kind of morphs into being like a battle droid. I mean, there's like something about like like space and um like an ultimate fighter who's kind of half man, half like robot, and he's big and strong. Um, and so he's kind of backing off. And this other man that's lying on the table is just like wearing a hospital gown. <laughs> and so it's like really weird, um, different people here <laughs> in the same room, developing um, a better balance with each other. <laughs> All right. He, uh, he says that he understands me. Um, something isn't, um, isn't okay with him. And he feels that the only way to make this something um, be acknowledged by the other is for him to create suffering for the other until this man in the hospital gown can finally understand what he's trying to say to him. And I say, do you even know what you're trying to say to him? Because as far as I can tell, you're just angry. And you haven't actually figured it out what the sentences are to define that anger so he can translate you so he can actually understand so things could come into a better balance. All right, there's something about a fire and um, it's actually just kind of a small flame in a it's like an old uh, it's like it would hold a candle in olden times and you could kind of like turn this and it would close and then the can it's like a lantern um but it's open on top like it seems like it would be more for a home than sort of an outdoors lantern and uh there's this lantern this like flame between you but um it it's only so large right because it's a candle but if for some reason this small flame is a giant um overwhelming fire and it's in the background. So I'm just calling, he's too loud. He's way too energetically loud. And so I'm just going to relax his energy because this energy is lodged in your throat. And so I'm going to just continue to relax him down so I can actually hear what this other guy in the hospital gown has to say. Um, he just, he just doesn't, he's just bitter and he won't stop. Like even when I'm like relaxing him down, he just still is justified in his frustration and anger. So I'm actually just going to put him in a box and throw him out of the room because I can't hear what's going on with this other guy um, with the hospital gown, the meeker one. I can't hear him. Because that's not fair, you know? You don't just get to be loud in order for you to be right. Being louder doesn't make you more right. And being softer, it's going to be harder for you to be heard. So there's already conflict just based on that. All right, so it's just this guy in this hospital gown, which is also a reflection of yourself here. And... He, he, so you are here as a very deep um, thinker, um, like a philosopher, even um, within yourself, a deep um, perceiver, let's say, um, an observer. And um, because of the perceiver-observer energy, you could be defined as a philosopher because you're choosing to see more deeply than the average bear like you choosing to get into the the grains of um of the human race of yourself of your own feelings and thoughts of your own balance your own identity of it all like you're really perceiving and feeling and this is extraordinary so this man this weak man in the hospital gown is actually quite extraordinary and And I, so let me see how I want to approach this conversation. Because when I start to show him the face of that kind of monstrous, like, space soldier, um, it gets really loud in here again. So I've got to just the, the go over there. And I didn't say that. 
because <laughs> I got to make sure the space soldier has nothing to do with this conversation until it can have something to do with it. Let me see what you say. <sighs> hmm. You won't speak up against it. And you show me that you've been now imprisoned into a room. It, you kind of show me that, so you boxed him up and threw him away, but all you really did was lock me in a room. So you've really done nothing to help me. And so I'm like, okay, let me see here. I, so you're, you, all right, we'll go back in time. We'll put you on this bed and we'll let him continue to choke you out as a means for you to reconcile your differences. So which would you prefer here? You're locking yourself into this room and you, you can leave at any time. I'm giving you time here to process what it all means to you. So what is it you want exactly? Let's see what he says. He wants both. Um, he wants... Um, he wants the safety of the space where nobody is going to get in to hurt him. But he also wants um, this friend. He also wants this friend and he considers him a friend. And the problem is, is there's a miscommunication in the ears between you two. Extreme miscommunication. And this friend has to alter himself in order to properly hear you. But he also has to figure out what it is he's trying to say without being overly aggressive, because it's not going to work. But you also have to acknowledge that an aggressive demeanor isn't going to help you either, because you're not being heard. So perhaps you need some time away. Perhaps you need some space. But you shouldn't be locked into a room in order to get space. You should be free to be whoever you want to be. But you say, but he just, it's like you, you feel like um, you have to be locked in a room. Otherwise, he's going to keep coming back with the same old chains. But at the same time, you care. And so you'll put up with it. And uh, I'm looking at this and I'm saying, wow. Wow, I, I, I got to think for a minute here, because this is a really unhealthy balance, really. It's not healthy at all, zero healthy. Everybody's involved in this um, big deal. So this scene is every part of your chakras are, are participating in trying to get this message across, and they're all trying to figure it out too because they all have their own um, reflection on it. Um, like the throat, what, you know, what, like there's something about communication that's not, um, it's like you're kind of holding in communication that needs to be said, but if you try to say it, it's not really gonna be heard because this is too loud. The heart cares. Um, still, there's uh, feelings of um, I need to be kind of cut off so I'm safe from that. But at the same time, I miss that because that's my friend. So and then the mind's getting in the way and sacral chakra because it's a loving like there's love involved here. There's caring involved here. So it's it's all over. It's like all your chakras are affected by this. And there's actually a spirit here. This was a crown that I, this is a spirit of light that is above all of this, okay? And then it's um, connected to the crown. Um, and it's trying to bring in some guidance um, from higher realms is what you would say. Now I see the spear is pointing up, um, allowing you to access guidance from higher realms is what that means. And so this is spirit of light. Then it's coming with lots of um, help of perspective. And it's a it's like an energy liquid and it's sort of um, coming into this crown and it's sort of dripping through. It's like dripping through all the different chakras for them to feed and be nourished um, um, with information that is uh, above all of this. So it's above all of this. Okay, okay, so. There's kind of a standstill because everything's catching up. I'm just going to let that kind of waft around.
All right, so Root now is getting involved and um, we've really broken up a lot of, I mean, basically it looks like weird wooden boards and some are mold and moldy and rotten and, and others are, tr are dry and trying to keep the structure together. And some are just in a very awkward positioning. And really we need a sledgehammer and just break all these wooden boards out. Um, and then we can start fresh. So we got to start fresh. We can't, like some of this stuff has got to get thrown out um, because it's not salvageable. Some of it is seriously not salvageable and some of it wasn't built correctly. So that has to get removed too. If we're gonna use those materials, they need to be put on properly, like for whatever the structure is meant to be. But really what they're showing me is we're just gonna start totally fresh and new. So all of this, I just, this whole conversation is the sledgehammer to all this and it's kind of energy that's um, starting to come down and the root is helping to process this here. It's just like pushing through the root and pushing out. It just seems to come out. It's like, um, I mean, they show me kind of a funny image of you, every human being has to go to the bathroom and what is going to the bathroom? releasing what no longer serves your body's purpose and so this energy is like going to the spiritual bathroom and then getting it out <laughs> so they're showing me that we're, that we're that's what we're doing here with the root already you feel a lot lighter and because you're feeling lighter it's helping you to access clarity about what this is about again there's a little bit of a um, it's just we need more time here to get um, this pushed out and allow everything to kind of catch up with what all we've accomplished so far. It's feeling so much warmer and softer. It's much more gentle. It doesn't matter about time. It doesn't matter about direction. It doesn't matter about um, the medieval man or the castle or this way or that way. Like. And none of it really matters because what we're really wanting to access is inner peace. And um, so you're starting to experience that. And the preciousness of that is more valuable than trying to um, bring the situation into balance. Is it really healthy to be locked um, in this place? Um, or is it really healthy to have a relationship that is there's miscommunication and hurt going on? Um, is this any of this really healthy because it's not bringing you inner peace and what you are wanting to attain all along is inner peace so we got to sometimes let go of things that aren't a reflection of what our needs are right now in association which with what is bringing you inner peace which is a reshaping of your life and the people in your life too in order to reshape yourself in a healthier way because all these relationships have been built on the versions of you um, that you've been over time and there's something about the time right now that is giving you access to a, a new sense of self which is uh, creating changes in the relationships in your life and it's going to give you more access to inner peace and all your chakras are starting to harmonize with inner peace. So they're clearing their minds of this relationship. So it just doesn't matter. Trying to figure this out really doesn't matter because what matters beneath the surface of that is inner peace. And that's super important. Inner peace. All right, more is trickling down. It's a bit toxic here in the throat. Um, so it just looks like a, I don't know, a brownish oil and it's just dripping down through the heart and motion sacral and into the root. It's just kind of like kind of sludge is coming down through here to re be released. But all of the energy bodies are starting to feel like warm friends again, like all the chakras are starting to hug each other. And um, it's about you working for you and um, you finding out what it is that you are and what you want out of life and your direction. Because it's not about everybody else, it's about um, you now. Obviously people matter too, but sometimes people distract us from who we are or who we are becoming. 
um, and we get lost and then our chakras get out of balance and then we get this. <laughs> so I'm getting you back into your truth. And it's interesting because the only demon I'm finding here is um, this friction, this uh, imbalanced relationship, which is distracting you from your pathway of inner peace. And it's, it's unhealthy. It's very unhealthy. They're showing me very quickly brand new image and it's um, I'm above the wings of a dove. And so I'm watching the dove flap, flapping its wings. I mean, it's not soaring. It's actually, but it's flying almost like, um, I don't know, like time is slowing down. So the wings are just like, gr like gracefully flapping in the slow motion. And it's like surreal and beautiful and ma majestic looking this white dove is freely flapping um, its wings in this gentle way. It's beautiful. And there's a, a man in a helicopter and I hear the helicopter in the loud no noise and it's very threatening. Um, it's like, um, okay, they show me many images of the world today um, where people protest and say no. And then you have government comes in and they just, they, I don't care what you say because this is the government and we want it our way. So you can have a millions of you, but there's um, plenty of guns. So we're going to do what we want to do, which now becomes controlling. That's an unhealthy balance as well. So um, I'm seeing this man in a helicopter, sort of um, the controlling government image. All right. Um, and I actually try very hard to give the government the benefit of the doubt because there's a lot of good people that actually work in the government. So it's the system that is really creating these imbalanced relationships. So we've got this um, sort of a controlling government image and this man with a military outfit and a, a like AK-47 or something is going to blow the smithereens out of this majestic white dove and it doesn't care. It's like very foul energy. It's going to snuff out the beauty in this world. This image makes me sad and the, there's a very loud interconnected meaning between um, your inner peace being violated by some jackass who wants to be in control of your happiness. It's not fair. And it's a miscommunication. There's misunderstandings about um, what this military man wants and what the white dove wants. But why can't they just, the military man could go do military stuff somewhere else. Why is it got to do that to the majestic white dove? You know, it's not, it's, it's like, just stop, just stop already. Just stop. Um, it's quite relentless because the more the white dove discovers its true beauty, which is you, um, the more angry that this uh, military man becomes because he can't control you anymore. And when he can't control you, what does he have now? What does he have left? So it's kind of becoming one of those weird mentalities where it's like, if I can't have you, nobody can. And if that means I have to kill you, then I will do that. I mean, it's, it's very disturbing energy. Um, and it's not kind anymore to you. It's not relating to you. And I'm starting to realize that the reason why this, this room with the chains and he's so mad because you're not listening but really all he's trying to do is control you into becoming like him or becoming his slave to his own anger and issues. And now you're not going to be a slave to him. Now you're going to be your own person. And now what does he have if he doesn't have you? You know, he can't find that white dove inside of himself. And he doesn't want to look to you to find it inside of himself because that means now he has to realize his own inner failures, which isn't failures, it's just self-realization that hurts sometimes. Man, his, uh, he is in ridiculously noisy. 
you want to talk about noise. I mean, it's like I'm getting out into nature so I don't have to hear cars and traffic. And then for some reason, everybody is outside my door. <laughs> He's like that annoying, ridiculous circumstance. <laughs> so, uh, it, but good news is the more we talk about it and the more I'm in your energy field talking to you about it, the quieter this gets and the more access to the true you you have. Because the true you is not you plus this chains man or the military man that wants to blow you to smithereens because he just wants to control you and threaten you. It's, it's actually you have all the power and now he's the one that's threatened. And now we're starting to turn the, turn the wheels here so that um, the strength lies with you. And it's quieting the sound of the noise that is trying to disrupt your inner peace, is trying to steal that, take that away. But I'm telling you, just what we've accomplished so far is creating a lot of inner peace, um, even more inner peace than we've accessed thus far. But it's not only that, it's muffling the noisiness. I mean, there's just so much noisiness that this um, persona is creating. Okay, I'm gonna, they're showing me that we're gonna keep doing more and more and more um, to create um, the silence, not, it's like silence around you too. It's like creating a, a protective uh, energy field, but I don't like to use the word protective because that means that you're, you know, you're not safe or something. It's just allowing you to have access to who you are um, without the noise, because the noise is just very distracting, and that's not what you want anyway. So I'm just creating more um, harmonies that are going to kind of digest the noise so it doesn't reach you. Okay. All right. So now I got to give it a minute because everything's catching up now with what I've accomplished so far. All right. Now there's like a third scene related to this. And I see that the military man has now um, come down to the ground and the majestic bird has, um, is at a standstill just flapping in the air, not going anywhere. And this scene makes me sad because that means this white dove is not as free as this white dove should be kind of thing. But he also is not um, loud anymore. And I see him as just a black tar um, person sitting on a log in deep thought. And there's a weird um, energetic cord between his heart and the heart of the white dove, which is you. And it's still like a chain, but you allow it because you love him still like you. It's like it's like a really meaningful friendship. It's like soulmates, you know, like we have awesome, awesome people that we meet in our life. And they're our most meaningful soulmates. And sometimes those soulmate connections um, are super healthy and balanced. And sometimes they become unhealthy and unbalanced. And they're not really supporting the growth of each other anymore. Um, and the healthiest um, gift they could give to each other is to actually move on um, and then reconnect in another lifetime um, when they can be friends again, like when the healthiness is returned to that connection. And um, it's interesting because he does have the ability to understand now. He has the ability to start to see that um, he needs to go in his own way. And you need to go in your own way. All right. Anger here. Because there's been a lot of hurt. Okay. And that's coming out of your heart, right? Oh, man. It's coming out of your head as well coming out of your sacral chakra and now it's punching out this boulder this bulge in your solar plexus and your throat is starting to say okay 
it's a lot of movement here. Uh, an expansion. Uh, your throat wants to be free because this um, connection is like um, very imbalanced. And um, I start to see that um, what was defined as the third eye sunk into the throat. Um, that black um, with the pencil in its heart is disappearing. And it's just this um, throat. And it's odd, but I see the throat oftentimes in a beautiful bright yellow color. <laughs> but it is, it's a beautiful, clean, bright yellow color is what your throat um, energy is like right now. And he's got to figure out who he is um, on his own. And I actually start to see that um, there becomes an understanding um, that dissolves this um, connection from the two hearts. But it never really, like, it's like it doesn't, because the your souls know each other f a lot. So, um, this is a real person and this connection it's like it's it, it's love right love never dies so even if you go your separate ways you've learned so much from one another that the memories will always be there right and they can be cherished they don't have to be disappointing memories because they've been so essential in helping you become who you are today so they're memories of love no matter um the ups or downs they're actually memories of love, really good memories of love. And that helps to create um, a sense of like that, that honest nod that says, yes, this is a good job. <laughs> it just feels like one of those honest nods that say, yes, I understand this. <sighs> We're almost through this thing, almost through. Um, so with the bird that's kind of in a standstill and the him, um, this tar man on the log, um, I see that this chain um, between the two hearts is thinning um, just to a strand of energy. But there doesn't, you still have the memory. So I feel very unhealthy even to have a string, like a thread of energy between your two souls here. Like, is still a thread is unhealthy. <laughs> so I'm going to dissolve this if I can. <sighs> but I'm waiting for your inner self to say yes to that. Because it doesn't matter what he says. This is your life. This is your life. Your inner peace. Your new, new beginning. you say that you're starting to learn some things about uh, energetic connections and and you're starting to understand that um, it's okay to cut this cord it's okay to cut this thread that doesn't mean that you're um that that isn't that it's like the most loving thing you could do is to do this that doesn't mean that your souls don't have all the memories still or that you don't have the past, present, and future happening all simultaneously. It just, it's what your human body and energy bodies need to keep you balanced in this life as a human being is to not have that threat. It's the only way to keep you entirely balanced as a human being. And this is a bit oddly painful, but... I see it doesn't necessarily rip, but there's an odd bit of blood um, as it comes out of the back of this bird's heart portal. Um, and, it, and it returns to this man and he has the rest of the string and it's got blood on it. And he doesn't know what to think. He wonders if he did that, if he created that hurt. He feels kind of weird to have a like a thimble of thread inside of his own heart related to this hurt. He's got a long pathway to understanding what love is all about. But he's learning about it because of you. And it's super healthy. 
it's actually altering this controlling energy and it's sending it back to the controller and now the controller is saying what is love and it's super healthy and i start to see his energy dry dry up and it kind of crumbles into some rocks just a bunch of rocks but it also looks like um this tar was in a way some armor that cut covered in tar so you can hear the clanking of metal pieces and it's just a pile this whole scene no longer is active i really wanted to see the white dove fly but we're gonna go to something new now and it's going to feel a little bit strange your life, this is almost like um, telling you um, about the future in a way you could say, but it's just perspective, all right? But they show me that your life is becoming, um, I mean, they're showing me a brand new carpet. It's like pulling out the red carpet, but this is a pure car a carpet of pure light. And you're standing on this new super awesome carpet of pure light. And it's like you, you've you reached a, a, a consciousness, a, low, a dimensional state, a vibrational like upgrade place. Like, and you're going to meet people of the same vibration and it is going to feel like something out of a dream. <laughs> and you're gonna understand the difference between the old vibration and this new one. And so they show me, it feels a bit like you're cut off at first. Like it's just you on the golden carpet or it's like a carpet of pure light, but there's some golden um, lights in here, some yellow, some so white. It's like, you can't even see into it. It's just like so much light here, but it feels like just you. But I also feel that there are threads developing that you don't even know about and it's attracting new soulmates. Um, really great people into your life. Um, and there's like a rainbow of a semicircle of them coming towards you. Um, but they don't even know that they have a thread connection with you yet either. So it's like um, you're, you're about to attract some really neat new people into your life. And they're going to be a reflection of how you are working on yourself and your goals and working on your heart and all of this. Um, they're going to be more attuned to that energy. They're going to be very much so attuned to that healthy, um, self-loving, inner peace. Um, I long to understand more about um, balanced love, balanced relationships. It's going to be more tuned into that. And I'll be honest, it's leagues above where you were <laughs> as even the white majestic dove. It is leagues above that dimensionally and vibrationally. And I see you here and that literally, I see you here now, like after all this energy work, it's like you just, you went on some um, elevator we didn't even know. And now bam, there you are because there is no majestic um, white dove because it's not even symbolic of where you even are right now so it's like mega energy upgrade so let me just keep watching here um, I keep kind of uh, checking to see what your vulnerability is to looking back looking down and potentially going down just to check um, because um, this is real um, friendship here and so you're going to care right but um you don't you actually it's not that you don't care you just know what's best for you and what you need right now in your life and that is wise and you are going to to attract friendships that are going to be quite easily just like going to distract you in all the right ways and it's going to feel very good very new very healthy, very much so like you're surrounded with more of your own kind kind of thing. Let me see here. Let me see what else we can do. All of this energy is like way above your head. Like you could call that like way above, way, 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 way above the crown chakra in a way. Like they keep showing me, um, Johannes is here and this is where Johannes is. 
so he's here as a human being but he's actually way up here which is way above even where his crown chakra reaches like it's like really up there and all that energy is being funneled back into the human you so you can start working with those higher vibrations which are more you than you've ever been before and you're taking that energy everywhere with you and you are becoming bright um, and that brightness is noticed. I mean, it's it, you're attracting people because of how bright you're you've become. It's really what it is. Okay, let me see. I'm gonna ask all your chakras how they're doing. We got just a couple more minutes. Okay. Whew. All right. So we've come a super long and positive way. There's something else they want to show me. This is all of them. And um, it's uh, dense. I mean, it's super, it's like, uh, I don't know what it, you could say. It's made out of rock, but it um, it's all blended together into one structure. And it's not exactly a straight line. It's kind of a, got a, some curvature to it. And it looks like clay that's been slapped together. It's just a bit awkward, but it creates a ridge. Um, and it, and it goes from above all the way. So all your chakras are inter interacted with this ridge. And they're saying we want you to remove this ridge. It goes from top to bottom here. And it returns now to the man, the knight. Um, he's not really a knight. Um, he just got a medieval. And he's uh, got a spear. And then it's returning to him. There's just a little bit of energy shifting going on here. He's kind of like a foot soldier. <laughs> he doesn't seem like a knight uh, type. Okay, so I'm returning to him and they show me the spear before him and how the, this ridge and the spear are somehow um, combined. They're somehow paralleling. Ah, uh, so I tell him to put down the spear and the protective armor. It's weighing you down. And all your chakras nod and say, yes, you don't need a spear where you're going. You don't need any of this medieval armor where you're going. So you're letting it all go. This is not necessarily easy. There's some resistance, um, but you are choosing to do this. So I'm slowly watching you letting it go. It's heavy. It's a very, 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 very heavy choice to make. You're really, you're almost there. Because they're showing me that as you remove, you let go of the spear and the protective armor. You don't need all this protective it's, energy. It's just weighing you down you're going to you're leaving the castle and um you're moving towards um the horizon which is actually just like um a peaceful pathway and it just takes you wherever it takes you or wherever you want it to be taken by it and you're leaving the castle and the war all of that behind like it doesn't suit you anymore none of it does You've almost accomplished this, almost. I'm just gonna stay here with you for a little bit longer. <sighs> there seems to be a female spirit that comes from the sky now, very bright energy. And she comes in sort of from the clouds and she comes down to you as you're removing this. But you, it's like you can get it 50% done, but you can't get it all the way done. And so she's coming here to help you kind of thing. And she shows me that some of this has been glued on. Um, like, like, I can't get you to just, you want to let go of the spear, but it's just for some reason it's still in your hands. And yes, you're taking this off, but you just can't take it all off. Like, there's still like an ability to do it yet. And so she's showing me like you super glued some of this on, even though you know you need to let it go. So she's gonna help with that. And um, I'm not sure who she is exactly, but um, she starts to spin and that light quickly goes into your heart. 
And then from within your heart, it gets super bright um, through your throat, through your mind, above your head. And then it gets super bright going through your solar plexus and sacral chakra root, all that. It's going really bright above and then below. And your heart portal is shining super, super bright. And it's odd, but it's like you were frozen as well. Not just super glued, but like, because I see um, ice melting from your eyes and a new sense of clarity and warmth and it's inner warmth <sighs> i'm not sure if this has something to do with your balance between divine masculine and divine feminine because i'm not sure if she's representing a part of yourself that you weren't ready to receive yet but she seems quite content to be guiding and helping you from within your heart and she's super sweet and super soft, like um, like petals of a flower. And she's just um, helping you to become bright and to let go of all of this so you can keep moving forward with the life you really want to live. And she's um, in your heart helping you do that. And she's waking you up. And... Huge shift in energy. <sighs> that is the complete letting go. Because <sighs> I'm like uh, instantaneously exhausted. Like it took all of my energy and all of my strength to keep that armor on. And now that it's off and I'm not carrying that energy weight, it's like I feel the exhaustion of it, how exhausting that it was to do that. And she's helping you to take your first step. And this is your first step. It's actually taking you off the edge of the drawbridge. And now you're on the actual path, which is like a nature path kind of thing. But I don't see any trees per se. They just kind of cut it off here and they show me grasses and like a, a like your classic pathway and that it's very bright as you continue moving forward. I feel like that castle was a maze and it was it had some confusing um very confusing parts and understanding your role within that castle when really none of it was actually you. It seemed like you were trying to find your place within the castle, but the castle never really was you. This guy on the pathway is you. Boy, you feel happy. You feel like yourself and you feel respected on um, the outside and on the inside, and you feel surrounded by your own kind of people um, who really care about you on the level that you want to receive that and to share that. So it's very balanced. <sighs> okay. <sighs> Johannes, that's what I had to share with you today. <laughs> oh, wow, Abby. You like it? <laughs> so amazing. I feel so calm like it's really like all of this okay. noise like I, I couldn't translate it into noise but I knew like something is there it's always kind of distracting and I know it's so yeah. calm so peaceful it's just incredible it's so amazing I'm, I'm glad thank you, you so that. so much <laughs> you're very welcome it, it's a pleasure and I'll be I'll be honest I did not have a clue when I started to see that first guy standing there what in the world are they trying to say to me <laughs> And just to go deeper and deeper and deeper, you find more of the understanding as you go deeper into your heart. It all starts to reveal itself. And now it's like a really great message about where you're, you know, the next steps of your life and what those are looking like. And it's positive and it's you. It's more you than you've ever been, which is cool. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome, Johannes. That's such a pleasure to be working with you. It's yeah. always you're always so amazing. You have helped me so much in the last like yeah half a year now. It's, it's incredible <laughs> the progress I I could have made with your help because much Thank of this you. I couldn't have resolved on my own in that way. Thank so you. that's it's, I'm so grateful. Yeah, Thank you. 
Amazing. It's a pleasure to work with you too, Johannes. You're like a, a regular part of my life and it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm really looking, looking forward for the next session. I'm not yet sure what, uh, right. what it will be about, so I didn't book it yet. Do you have any idea what it should be about? <laughs> hmm, let me think for a minute. I'll be honest, after this session, I have a feeling you're going to have some life learning in the next few <laughs> weeks that will give you some ideas of what you want to work on next because um i do, i feel like right now you're such a ball of light that it's really hard to say what that what that <laughs> needs to be in the future so i think life is going to reveal that for you okay awesome yeah. you're welcome Johannes. <laughs> looking forward to it really much it's yes it's so amazing thank you oh. Thank you so much. It's so amazing. I feel so calm, so peaceful, so connected. It's such a shift. It's and it's really grounded this time, you know. Like in the past mm -hmm. I was always like getting so spaced out and now it's really grounded and yeah. It's... That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> so is it is it night where you are or morning or it's uh close to ten PM, so I see. So <laughs> you got some cool things to think about before bedtime. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> and some wonderful dreams to be had. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much. Awesome. Okay, Johannes, well, have a wonderful evening and a really great night's sleep. <laughs> Thank you. Have a great day and see you soon. <laughs> okay, that sounds good. I'll be looking forward to it. Okay. okay. Bye.